All right, with chapter four, there's only four exercises that I really want to hammer down. That is exercise, exercise 4A, on, uh, exercise 4B, 4C, and 4D. Now, 4E, uh, we are likely to do. It depends how we go, okay? So 4E is an application of 4A to 4D, and the focus is that you guys will learn what different graphs look like. So unfortunately, we're going back to what quadratics, you know, polynomials, that kind of thinking, okay? So a lot of graphical representation of what we already know. Okay. Now we're applying things like limits, we're applying things like uh, our you know, x corner, y corner, blah, blah, in order to try and graph these. And the, it's a really good idea to know generally what these graphs look like. Just like how with our polynomials, knowing what a positive parabola, positive cubic, what those look like gives you a really good picture of what kind of graph you should be drawing. Okay, so the first one is rectangular hyperbola, right? So that's rectangular hyperbola. Alright, so the idea with a rectangular hyperbola, or really with uh, rectangular hyperbolas and truncus, is which is what we're looking at next, is that they have two asymptotes. Okay, does anyone remember what an asymptote is? James? It's a uh, point where a graph is very close to the end of each. Close. Is it a point or a line? Oh, it's a line. Perfect. It's a line. Now, for the argument of uh, year 11 methods, those lines are always straight. Well, almost always straight. When you, when you do year 12 methods, sometimes those lines can be curved. For this year, we're focusing on straight asymptotes. Okay, so with our rectangular hyperbola, it looks something like this. Let's say y equals to 1 over x. Now, this is a classic example because I've talked about it before, okay? Now, can anyone tell me why is this a classic example? What's, what's special about 1 over x? Something that's impossible. Perfect. You can't divide any number by 0. What do you get if you divide any number by 0, Mary? Undefined, perfect. So it doesn't really exist. It's not that it's infinity or positive infinity, negative infinity. It just doesn't exist. Right? It doesn't even make sense in the mathematical world. So x cannot be 0. Are we okay with that? Perfect. x cannot be 0. Which means x equals 0 is an asymptote. Because for my graph, there is no possible way my value of x can be 0. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a straight line there. That's dotted because it's an asymptote. And that will be x equals to 0. Okay? Now, if I've got a, uh, x equals to 1, well, my y value is going to be 1. What happens to y if I go from x being 1 and I go in the positive direction towards infinity? So what happens to my y value as x gets bigger? Hello? Would you like me to repeat the question? What happens to the y value? Because right now it's 1 over x. What happens to the y value as x gets bigger and bigger? Perfect. It decreases, right? Because the larger the number is on the bottom, the smaller my fraction is going to be. Just like how 1 over 10 is larger than 1 over a million. Okay? So, as my value of x increases, my... Uh, my what's the one thing? My y value, there we go, uh, in decreases. Yes. So I guess I'm like this. Now, what happens to my y value as I go from x is 1 and it decreases but never touches 0, remember? So it decreases towards 0. So 1 over a half, or 1 over 0 0.5, is actually 2, right? 1 over 0 0.25 is 4, and it keeps increasing in value. But as soon as we get to, well, we never do, but just assume we get to x equals 0, it doesn't exist anymore. So you can see that our graph will keep increasing this way, uh, I have no artistic skills. You think as a math teacher I would draw, be able to draw graphs. Yes, so it looks like that, okay? So as my value of x increases, so it goes this way, my value of y decreases, right? And it will never, ever reach a certain value of y. What is that? Zero. I don't know who said that, but thank you. So no matter what value of x is, y can never be zero you can give any value of x let's let's assume only positive for now x could be a billion but the y value of y is still not zero okay so there's no way y will ever reach zero are we okay with that awesome so i have another asymptote 
where y cannot equal zero. So my asymptote is y equals to zero. Okay, now let's look, let's look at the other side. As I go from zero and I go towards negative infinity, or hopefully, as you guys remember the notation, as x goes towards negative infinity from the, oops. Hopefully you remember that kind of stuff. Uh, as we go towards negative infinity, what happens to my value of y, Carol? Perfect. So if I go from, let's say, x equals to negative 1, I would get y is negative 1. But if x equals to negative 5, it's going closer, right? So it's going to look something like this. And that's my rectangular hyperbola. Now, this is the general shape we're working with. Now, we're going to be doing a lot of transformations, so dilations, uh, translating, so translating, shifting left, right, up, down. Uh, but this is the general shape we're working with, okay? A rectangular hyperbola, a normal y, a y equals 1 over x, has asymptotes where x cannot equal to 0 and x cannot, a y cannot equal to 0. Do I have any questions? No? Okay. I'm not going to spend too much time on the transformations. I just want you guys to know the general understanding, the fundamental understanding as to why these graphs look like this. Okay, so that's 1 over x. Now let's go to exercise 4b, which is on the truncus. Now the truncus is very, 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 very similar to the rectangular hyperbola with one difference. So where our, our uh, rectangular hyperbola was in the general function, uh, general shape of y equals to 1 over x. Now y equals 1 over x is the equivalent of uh, like y equals x squared to a parabola. It's not the general form, but it's just the standard what we look at when we're comparing with, okay? So y equals 1 over x is a rectangle hyperbola. The truncus comes in the form of y equals to 1 over x squared, okay? Now you can tell the difference is going to be that no matter what value of x I put into the bottom of the fraction, my overall value is still going to be positive, right? If I put an x equals negative infinity, it doesn't matter. It's still going to be positive infinity after it comes out of the square, okay? So that's the whole idea of the truncus. It's very similar to a rectangle hyperbola. I'm going to go ahead and draw the graph again, except whatever, for, let's say I put x equals to 1, I'm going to get y equals 1, and I put x equals to negative 1, I'm still going to get y equals 1. So for whatever value I get, I put in as x equals whatever, as a positive side, if I have the absolute opposite of negative, so let's say I put x equals 10 and x equals negative 10, I'm going to end up with the same y value. Would you agree? Yeah, awesome. So we know that 1 over x looks, looks like this on this side. If no matter what value of x I put in positive, uh, negative, sorry, it's just going to reflect the positive side. Does it make sense that my tr negative side is going to look like that? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if actually, it's actually called this for this reason, but the way I remember it is it looks like a trunk and that's why we call truncus. Ta-da, magic. I mean, maths. Uh, so that's the truncus. Once again, we'll work with our uh, translations another day, but that's the general idea, okay? Can anyone tell me where do we have our asymptotes? Jay? That's being x equals zero. Perfect. x equals zero, why? That's not exactly. You can't, if x, is, if x equals zero, then it will just from that denominator, from denominator is zero. Times Perfect. Zero squared is still zero. One over zero is undefined. So you can, x cannot equal to zero. What's the other way, Merrick? Um, Perfect. Nice and simple. Y cannot equal to zero. Same idea. No matter what value you put in to x, you cannot get a uh, value of zero. Okay. Now, those asymptotes will change if your function changes, all right? So it depends, once again, if you translate it, so if you move it up, let's say, three units, your asymptote's also going to move up three units, okay? So it, depending on what your function is, that's where your asymptote's going to be. It's not always going to be x equals zero, y equals zero, okay? So for example, if I go back over here with my y equals to one over x, if I had y equals to one over x, minus 1, does it make sense that x cannot be 1? Does that make sense? Because if x is 1, then I'm going to get y, 1 minus 1, 
which is zero, and I get one over zero, it doesn't make sense. So x cannot be one, in which case my asymptote is now positive one. I've shifted it right one unit, one unit, but it says minus one. Does it sound very familiar to something else? Yeah, same with your parabolas. If it's inside, inside the bracket, then it's the opposite. But if you do, for example, plus three, it just shifts up three units. It's exactly the same idea. Yeah, and the same idea with truncus, except I will explore that later day, except it'll look like in a bracket. But does that make sense, the general idea of truncus and rectangular hyperbola? Yeah, I think in the recording, I'm gonna kick myself for saying, does that make sense a hundred times, but does that make sense? All right, any questions? No? All right, up next, the graph of root x. All right. Now, the graph of root x is particularly interesting because... The graph of root x is particularly interesting because no matter what value of y, it doesn't really matter, but if we specifically look at our domain, what can't x be? Yeah. Perfect. It doesn't exist, right? No real solutions in the real world plane. Now, specify real because if any of you guys are doing specialists, it gets a little bit more complex. So, root x, you cannot have any negative value of x, right? It doesn't make sense. So, we only draw the positive sides. If I have x equals to 4, what's my y value going to be? 2. Easy. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right, x equals to 1. Perfect. Now let's say x equals to 16. Let's move over here. 16. What does my y equal to? Yeah. You probably notice that as we, let me do those points now, as we move across our x axis, my y axis increases as well, but at much, much slower rate. Okay? So this is what a, oh, it's very ugly, but this is what a uh, root x graph looks like. Yes? Uh, I don't know if I'm right, but it's kind of reminding me of like the exponential one. Like, is it kind of the same idea with the, you know, it's like the shape of the graph, it's just reminding me of exponential. Yeah, it's to the power of a number, it's an indice. Yeah. Now root x, remember, is to the power of a half. Yeah. But we're specifically choosing root x because we've just chosen that as a, a, a particular function. It's just kind of like how we have x squared is something that we work with very often, yeah. but x to the power of 63 is not really something we work with. They've just chosen root x or x power of half as something that we work with quite often. So we have root x and it looks like that, right? Now, what happens if I have y equals to, I should probably color code these, huh? Let me just change that to a purple. Isn't it, is technology amazing? Okay, so let's say, oh no, technology is terrible. Okay, so let's say I have the function of y equals to negative root x. So any value I get, any whatever I put in, I'm just going to get end up with a negative version. Okay, so whatever value of y I get, I'm just going to go ahead and flip it. So if that purple one is x uh, root x, sorry, negative root x is just going to give me this. Does that make sense? Yeah, because I flipped it this way. Because no matter, so I'm going and I'm going to have any value here. And then I'm going to make it a negative value because I'm putting the negative in front. But if I've got y equals to root negative x, what that's saying is I need to have negative value of x in order to have it as a positive value in the square root. I feel like I just said a tongue twister. Did that make sense? I'm seeing a lot of nods on this side, none on this side. So for this graph over here, in order to have a positive number in the square root, I need to have a negative value of x. Because if I put in positive 1, I'm going to end up with negative 1, and you can't have a negative in a, uh, in a, in a square root. So, for example, I put in negative 1. Negative 1 times by that negative gives me positive 1, and then I can draw that. Does that make sense? So, in other words, I'm flipping it this way instead, and I'm going to get a function that looks like that. Now, these are... Reflections, uh, we will go into that a bit further on, but I just want to introduce that idea, okay? So you need to understand why do we flip it this way? Why do we translate it, etc., okay? It's no longer, good, no longer good enough to just memorize where or how the translations happen. You need to know in what way or why they happen, 